I got asked the question, which culture am I more of? Am I more Colombian? Am I more Chinese? Am I more Canadian? And I was like, I don't know. Like, that's a really hard question. It's like, it's like I would say like, check all of the above. Hey everyone, it's Maria here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm making another video on what it's like to be a mixed girl part two. Now I know I made a video about this a few years ago and I look back at that and I cringe. <laughs> Um, but a few years have passed, more knowledge has been acquired, I've been doing more self-reflection and I wanted to make this video um, just to talk about this topic a bit more. So when it comes to being a mixed girl, and I would say if my identity was based on my primary passport, that would be my Canadian passport. And I would say I'm Canadian, but that doesn't sit right with me because I was born in Colombia, I have a Colombian father, I have a Chinese mother, and I was raised in Colombia, China, and Canada. And I feel like it's it's not enough to say that I'm, I'm just Canadian with Colombian and Chinese heritage. I am Colombian and Chinese and Canadian, and it's a handful to say, but um, I'm very lucky and very fortunate to have grown up in this trilingual household where I've picked up Spanish and Chinese and English, of course. So it's been a real blessing. Great stuff. But the not so great stuff is that growing up in this multicultural household and being mixed ethnicity has definitely hindered my ability to recognize myself and and find out for myself like what is my ethnicity what is my identity essentially um because i'm, I'm part of so many and growing up i've struggled with a tug of war between my colombian culture and my chinese culture and in some senses, I also feel like I wasn't Colombian enough because I miss a lot of years being in Colombia and I wasn't up to date with like the coolest Colombian music or telenovelas or slang. And I wasn't Chinese enough because my mom would talk to me about Chinese poems from like the Tanga and see, and I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, this is so confusing and Chinese is so difficult to learn. And I would feel more Canadian because at school we'd be speaking English and with my friends it would be in English and I would dream and I would think in English. So it was always a struggle and going back to Colombia or going back to China to visit, it's um, it has always been a really interesting experience because I feel like as the time passes and the more time I spend there, I'm easily adapted to the environment that I'm in. So if I'm in Colombia, I'm definitely more Colombian and Latina. Um, and if I'm in China, I kind of am more more Chinese in that sense. Um, funny thing, a guy that I went out with, um, he heard me speak three languages. And he was like, Marie, you have a different personality in each language. And I was like, whoa, I didn't think about that. But maybe. Um, come to think of it like i'm not i'm not a funny person but i i would say that i have some sense of humor but if i like switch to spanish or chinese like that is gone i have like zero personality <laughs> but yes you know like i am ambiguous i am multi-ethnic i am part of different cultures and i think that's a beautiful part about about this world and about um people from different ethnicities coming together and and making mixed babies um i know that a lot of um mixed ethnicity couples watch my videos and uh for you guys who are planning on having babies or already have babies of mixed ethnicity i wanted to um to tell you guys that i definitely think it's an amazing idea for you to um, have your kids learn about the different cultures that they're part of so not only where they grow up, whether that's in the States or in Europe or in whatever country around the world, um, but they also learn about their roots and going back to their, their family roots. And that's the language that you speak, that your partner speak, and, and the cultures and the traditions and the heritage that those things hold because those are so valuable. And, you know, like me growing up in Canada, I'm like, yeah, I'm Canadian, but no, I'm, I'm also Colombian and I'm, I'm also Chinese. And it's, it's a beautiful thing to, to be part of all those three cultures for me. And, um, for the record, if you did watch my old one, now that when people ask me what ethnicity I am, I do not roll my eyes or make crazy faces. Um, I answer humbly and, and happily. And it's, it's, it's a mouthful to say, but it's great. It's like, yeah, I'm Canadian, Colombian, Chinese. And, my father is Colombian, my mom is Chinese, I was raised in Canada, and it's like, people are like, okay, like, stop talking. One more thing I wanted to mention is that if you feel like there's some pressure 
to be a certain way, whether that's a certain culture or the way your parents want you to be or some kind of ethnicity thing, I would just like you to remember um, this quote that my dad told me. He said, you know what? Just embrace everything, embrace all parts of yourself and um, just adapt and, and take the things from that culture, whatever culture it is, when it's convenient for you. So it's like when it's more convenient for you to be one culture than the other or you really like a value from that certain culture, you just take it and, and you go with it. And if it doesn't bring you joy, then you just then you just stop. Like, for example, in Chinese culture, if you're a girl or a young lady and you're in your 30s and you're single and you haven't found a partner, um, society and your traditional mom, that's mine, puts a lot of pressure on you to like get married before you're 30 or you're going to be a shenyu, which is a leftover woman. So I used to take that really personally. And then I realized, yeah, my mom is Chinese and I love Chinese culture, but it doesn't mean that I have to adapt, ad adopt that mentality and that part of that culture simply because my mom is Chinese. Um, I'm just gonna live my life the way I want, right? And okay, so we already said one thing about Chinese culture. So I'm gonna say one about Colombian culture. Um, Latin people are just not very on time. And I like to be like easy and going with the flow. But you know, like after living in Denmark and, and being in Canada, I'm like, I like to be on time for things. And I do not like how Latinos are like 20 minutes late for almost everything. So that part of that culture, I ain't gonna adopt that. <laughs> I also do want to say that double the cultures, double the fun, but also like double the problems <laughs> because, um, I mean, we get like double the the holidays and the celebrations and I get to, um, you know, have also Christmas and also New Year's and also Chinese New Year, which is super fun. Um, but then there all also are also cultural clashes. And I feel like sometimes those are inevitable just because cultures are so different. Um, but at the end of the day, if there's a foundation of love, I think that that can definitely overcome everything. One last word I did want to leave you with is flexibility. So flexibility, the way we see ourselves as people of mixed ethnicity, it's like we're fluid, you know, we're like water. We can just, you know, be whatever we want to when when it's convenient for us. And I think it's, that's a huge privilege. Um, but also flexibility in the way we we hold our cultural lenses and how we perceive the world and the people around us. And I think that it's important to, to see people as, as not just one box, like whether they're one ethnicity or, or two or three or more. Um, our ethnicity doesn't define us. It's not all of our identity. It doesn't, our identity doesn't rely just on, on our ethnicity. So I think that's very important to, to keep in mind. And yeah.